Welcome to VR Essentials. How are you all guys doing now today? Very cool videos. We're putting the Pico 4 to the test with the with a battery update video as Pico have been publicizing on their Twitter and other social media that you can use it for 2.5 hours. And what can you do it during that time? Now, I've been using the Pico since it's experimental phases before the real one came out which is i would say for a good almost a year now i would say so a good two thousand to three thousand hours of using this thing can you believe it two to three thousand of testing this headset we're going to be putting it through its paces today and i'm going to be starting the of course the battery from 99 or 100 percent all the way to zero percent when it gives up on me and whether it really does last 2.5 hours so do watch until the end of this video guys as i'm testing it with a variety of different apps some which are a bit more grueling in terms of the gpu power and others that are a bit more simpler including for example after the four as well as 11 table tennis vr shooty skies and also rec room and also zombie land and i think there's another one in the mix as well so i'm going to give you my impressions after using it for 2.5 hours also so you get to really understand what it makes how it makes me feel what the graphics are like also whether i would actually buy this headset in 2023 to be honest with you and whether pico are saying the truth in their advertisements or whether they're exaggerating all right guys watch until the end of the video remember to like and hit the notification bell after you subscribe because of course you'll be notified of all the cool videos that i upload to the channel on a regular basis and hit the likes to support and help the algorithm to promote this video to further to more people so we can grow the vr essentials community all right so we're inside of the pico and i literally just took it off the plug so as you can see we're at 99 percent and just to make things fair, there is no headphones plugged into the USB-C. And also, of course, we're not going to be using virtual desktop or casting or anything. I'm just going to use the headset as is everybody. So let's go into the app and start playing some VR and see how long, as you can see, it's 1837 here on the clock, how long we can actually use the Pico 4 and whether after the updates and also the ads that Pico 4 are showcasing on the Twitter feed, whether it will last two hours and a half and 30 minutes. All right, let's go, guys. So first of all, I just want to define the parameters just to make sure that, of course, the testing was conducted under the right circumstances. First of all, I did not use any headphones whatsoever and plug them into the USB-C as, of course, using that way would actually deplete the batteries even faster. The other thing is that all the experiences that you're going to see today, including the collaboration between Pico and Amaze VR in the Hotiverse, which you can see right now on the screen, which is absolutely mind-boggling and guys you gotta go and experience this well none of it was used using the virtual assistant plugged into the pc vr or using some kind of virtual desktop where you know i'm testing to the pc so all the games all the experiences that you see today are done within the actual pico 4 itself and not to the pc just want to make sure that that is absolutely clear also, of course, I was not casting to any computer or TV or anything of that kind, because of course, if you're casting to your phone or a computer or a television, then that will also deplete the battery much faster for those who are not aware of that. In terms of the brightness, I would say it's more or less, you know, here and there the same. Of course, I didn't use any form of, you know, third party things that deplete the battery in any way or any kind. I just basically just imagine that it's taken out of the box and then the volume is set to about 80% or so or 75% on the headset. And then that's that. So I'm going to give you my thoughts in terms of the audio, the graphics, and all these various different things. As you can see here, there's more gameplay with After the Fall. There is something that is synonymous for all the various different games in VR. So some of the graphics, for example, will depend on the developers as to what techniques they used and also what game engine that they might have used in order to power their games. And these different game engines and also all the various different settings inside of their games will also 
you know, contribute towards the depletion of the actual headset itself. So perhaps it is possible that if you are using some games which don't require that much GPU and make the fan turn a lot uh, and heat up also the headset, then, you know, you may be able to use it for longer and uh, versus others that you may be able to not using for such long and it will deplete the battery faster. So do watch until the end of the video, guys. And I will put in the timestamps also where I actually checked the timing and checked how much battery was left as we went into this 2.5 hours challenge. So do go there just to see the time because I show the clock and the time with the actual percentage of the battery left at that specific moment. In terms of recording the footage that you see, for example, here in Shooty Skies, which is one of my favorite VR experiences, really do highly recommend you guys download this game because you're just going to have so much fun, is the fact that I only recorded 30 seconds here, one minute there. So I really do feel that that's not really going to contribute a lot towards depleting the battery that much, to be very honest with you. Maybe 1% at the maximum too, but I very, very much doubt it, as I didn't really record that much. Maybe in total I recorded about 10 to uh, 15 minutes or so within the two 2 or 2.5 hours or whatever hours because do stay tuned until the end of this video guys as not only would I give you my final thoughts about whether you should purchase the Pico in 2023 or whether the actual amount of hours that they advertise in their advertisements is true or whether it is an exaggeration. So stay tuned guys. So first things first, I just want to talk about the audio. I have to admit that using the speakers that is provided by Pico. Of course, I can't compare them to the HP Reverb G2 Valve speakers as they did a collaboration together, but the audio is really not that bad, guys. I have to say that it sounds pretty spatial and pretty stereoscopic in a way. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really disturb me. Okay, the basses could be a little bit better, the treble could be a little bit more balanced, but honestly speaking, it's absolutely fine. If you do take off the headset, however, and you have the volume set to about 70 to 100%, then people will definitely hear you play. So it's definitely not for people who are looking for privacy without disturbing people around them. If you want total privacy and you don't want to disturb the others, then you're definitely going to have to put some headphones on using a USB-C adapter inside of the headset. The tracking of the Pico 4 is also absolutely beautiful, really works very well, as you could see with Ragnarok there, where you have to do some really fast uh, gestures with your arms. Really, really good. And guys, do let us know in the comments below what are some of your favorite games that you play with the Pico 4 or Quest 2 or other VR headset. I'd love to know or that you wish were on the Pico 4 library also. So yeah, so the tracking, absolutely great. And also the controllers themselves are very ergonomic. I really do like the feel of the controllers inside of my hands, even though my hands are not gigantic or tiny. I think they're just normal hands, to be honest. The haptic feedback, you can adjust them in the settings. I do feel that the haptic feedbacks are okay. They're not great, to be honest. They're not the best uh, controllers for haptic feedback, but much, much better, of course, than the HP Reverb G2 for sure. But compared to the uh, the index controllers, I'd love to know your thoughts, guys, if you have a Pico 4 and also an index, whether, you know, the index controllers are a mile ahead of the Pico 4 or whether, you know, in your mind, the Pico 4 controllers are absolutely okay. Now, some of the things that I did notice in terms of the battery power usage is that when you're installing or updating games, it does take more battery power than when you're actually playing normal games. So that is, I think that is quite interesting in terms of what was happening because in literally when I was updating Rec Room, which took about two or three to four minutes, uh, literally I would say 5% of battery power was completely like already just gone like that. Now, normally in my experience, I'm not gonna reveal how many percentage of battery gets used right now, but you're gonna have to watch until the end of the video to see whether you know it's 1% per minute or half a percent per minute or something, because you know I want to let you know at the end of this video whether it is true, whether the battery power was used up after 2.5 hours or whether you know it was depleted much faster, of course. But some of the things that really, really shocked me in the Pico 4, perhaps I'm just too used to using PC VR that often now because I don't really use the Pico 4 to be honest that often anymore due to the standalone factor is the fact that well 
PC VR graphics are just amazing. And I noticed that in every single game that I tried in the Pico 4, including After the Fall, or including the Amaze VR concert, or including Ragnarok, or even uh, Table Tennis VR, or, um, you know, Rec Room, and, 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 <laughs> and Shooty Skies, it's the fact that all the edges are jaggered. There's a lot of flickering going on in all the games. And honestly speaking, I have to admit, that it really gave me a headache. Now, I was still staying in VR because I was trying to do the challenge to see whether the battery would use, you know, be used up under 2.5 hours or whether it would last 2.5 hours or whether it would last even longer for that matter. But I have to say that there were just so many jagged edges. The graphics are just handled in such a poor way, to be honest with you. I was actually quite shocked. Um, the other thing is that I noticed is that Everything seems to be a little bit enlarged inside of the Pico 4 compared to when using, for example, my HP Reverb G2 or also uh, my DPVR E4 on using Steam VR. So I'm not quite sure what's going there, going on there. It seems that some of the resolution scaling going on inside of the games, um, you know, make you feel like you're a little bit smaller or shorter, or um, I don't know, just just everything around me just felt a little bit big, like everything was a bit either, I don't know, no, I wouldn't say stretched, but just everything felt a little bit like it was upscaled, you know, like 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 they were giant, like you were in a giant kind of universe where, you know, uh, where, where you would pick up a, a, a box of matches or you'd pick up an object, a pen or something in the real life. Normally, you know, it's relatively small, but then when you're in VR for some reason on the Pico 4, uh, especially like, for example, in 11 tennis, uh, 11, 11 table tennis uh, with the paddle, it just felt like it was bigger than what it would be in real life. So let me know, guys, in the comments below whether you feel this way as well. I didn't really notice this in the past before the update of 5.6, so perhaps something occurred there, or maybe it's just because I haven't been using the Pico standalone version for quite some time, and therefore I'm having this kind of immersion experience at this moment in time. But I did notice this also with the Pico uh, Neo 3 at the time, which meant that I had to stop using the Pico Neo 3 because at the time it was really much more exaggerated than now and really gave me a super headache. So I really could not use the Pico Neo 3 uh, when that occurred. And when, the fixed, when they had fixed it, of course, I didn't have the Pico Neo 3 anymore. I gave it to a school and then I had the Pico 4 and the Pico 4 seemed to be completely normal. But now it seems that there are some rendering resolution scale issues. So do let me know, guys, in the comments below whether it's something that you feel uh, you're experiencing as well. I wouldn't say they're major. I wouldn't say they're so, it's so big, the difference between the real life and the game, that it's really that super noticeable. But it is for me, as someone who uses VR every day, quite noticeable, I have to admit. So that's really what shocked me, is the fact that the graphics are really poor for most of the games. A lot of jagged edges, a lot of flickering going on on the edges of the objects. I mean, in Rick Room, I could barely read any text, to be honest with you. In Sweet Skies, all the guys, all the bad guys and things around, you know, the edges were quite jaggered. The characters inside of uh, Zombieland also weren't very clear. So I don't know, guys. I mean, it just didn't give me a great kind of sensation, a kind of experience in gaming in VR. But again, as I said, this could potentially be because I'm very, very used to PC VR where the graphics in that kind of immersion are absolutely amazing. So love to get your thoughts on this, guys. Please leave your comments and your feedback below. So yeah, so there you go, guys. In I mean, all in law, after using this for 2,000 hours, to be honest with you, it's still not a bad headset whatsoever. It's just that, you know, I was quite shocked by the level of the graphics and the quality. Uh, but again, as I mentioned in the video, it could just because I've used PCVR so much, I get to see all these kind of things. But I think if you're someone who's not used to VR, then, you know, just be cautious. Maybe try the Pico 4 before you buy it for a good half an hour or an hour if you have the, you know, uh, the ability to do that. Because some people do get motion sickness or do get headaches uh, from graphics that are not super clear, including jagged edges or flickering that occurs in the game. So, you know, unless it's very clear inside of the headset as to what you're looking at, do bear in mind that, you know, you could have those sensations. So do go and test the headset. I would advise you before you make that purchase, if you're able to do that. The other thing is I have to say that after, I will reveal the amount of time that I was able to use this in just a moment, but I have to say that after one hour and a half, I really needed to take the headset off my head because unfortunately I have to use a hat uh, because otherwise it doesn't fit my head. That's the first thing, even though there are other facial interfaces you can purchase. 
Uh, so, and there are different ways to make it more comfortable. But for me, I have to put a hat on of some kind. First of all, it does block the light coming in from the backside. So it gives me a more immersive experience. And also it's much, much more comfortable. But after an hour and a half, it really gets front heavy for me, to be honest with you. And it presses against my hat and then my hat hurts me. So again, maybe I have to use a different hat, you know, without the, the, the metal pieces here of the caps. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, you know, to mention that to you guys that, you know, after a little while, I do need to take it off. But for the purpose of today's video, I didn't. I powered through all the way to make sure to see how many hours or minutes was I able to use the VR headset. But the other things that I'm really happy with, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is the audio, which is here. Here are the speakers. I have to say that was very good. Really impressed by the audio of this headset. It did a great job. And of course, the fact that the pancake lenses are very clear also uh, meant that the graphics inside, there was no blurriness around the edges, uh, which again is, is fantastic, you know, in terms of uh, having that as pancake lenses. And that is absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Um, but in terms, okay, of terms of the battery power, guys, in terms of battery power, well, I have to let you know that it actually uh, stopped at 8.37. So we started at, I powered on the headset at 6.37, and it stopped at 8.37 on the dot. In fact, there was no warning whatsoever. It just stopped. It, I, I mean, they, normally there's a warning to let you know, okay, there's 20% left or there's 10% left, but I didn't, I didn't see the 10% left uh, warning, and basically it just blacked out um, at 8.37. So that means that the headset actually lasts, okay, after 2,000 hours of, of, of gameplay, uh, only lasts... Two hours, guys. So that's right. That's 120 minutes on the minute, not 150 minutes, two hours and a half. No, sorry. Oh my God, got it wrong. So 120 minutes, yeah, 120 minutes is two hours, right? So 180 minutes is three hours, right? 60 minutes is one hour. Okay, sorry. Woo. My dyslexia sometimes does take the, the better of me. So it only lasts two hours, guys. Now that's just enough to watch a movie, to be honest with you. And as you could see today, we, we tried different experiences which are quite similar to the ads used or showcased on the actual Twitter feed or advertisements that are posted by Pico, by the way. And if I was using, let's say, uh, After the Fall, I doubt it would have lasted two hours because normally with After the Fall, after an hour 30 or an hour 45 minutes, it's already pretty much out. After the Fall does use up more battery power than most of the other games, but Rec Room uses quite a lot of battery power. Also, I would say that uh, Ragnarok and uh, also uh, Shooting Skies use less but you know they all use quite a bit, and also multiplayer games will use a little bit more because there's more people, there are more things in the scene, and all these kind of different things. But again, I was quite let down by the graphics. I have to, I have to say. So if I had 500 to spend, would I buy this headset? Honestly, as someone who's in PC VR, no, I wouldn't because um, it's not good enough for me. I, I, I can't use standalone VR headset to be honest with you. So I wouldn't buy this. If I had 500 US dollars, I would focus on buying a PC VR headset and not a standalone VR headset. It does do a good job for PC VR, I have to admit, but it's still not there. I, I, I find that the, the DP VR E4 is actually slightly better than this headset for uh, PC VR. And of course, the G2 so far is my go-to VR headset. I wouldn't change it until maybe when I test out the MetaQuest 3 or the Pimax Crystal 3, so do hit the notification bell after you subscribe, as I will be testing the Pimax Crystal very soon. Um, then, of course, that could be the headset I want to go for. And the Beyond by Big Screen could also be potentially an experience, but it's much, much, much more expensive, of course. We're talking thousands of dollars here. So in terms of a $500 headset, I personally would not buy this. But someone who's maybe new to VR or beginner to VR, uh, who just wants something very easy and very, you know, don't really care about graphics and all that kind of stuff, then sure, go for this. But I would still suggest that you try it out first before you buy, just to make sure that you're okay with the graphics. Uh, and if you're absolutely fine with it, then go ahead, you know. But if you find that the jagged edges and the flickering in the games create some kind of headaches for you, or, you know, it's not very safe for you, then, you know, you do have to take into account that that is also part and parcel of a headset that only costs 500 US dollars or less. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. I was trying to really give you my impressions based on more than 2,000 hours of using this headset and really give you my, my true, you know, my, my true feeling about it uh, and not really trying to hype it up or, or, or to, to talk things that are, you know, crap, you know. I'm really trying to give you my sincere 
experience based on someone who's been using this for almost a year now. All right, guys, take it easy. Smash the likes. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye for now, guys. Bye-bye. Talk to you in the comments. Bye.